can't hear you. Okay, now no, it's good. Um, so I've asked everybody to just uh, mute their cameras when they come in. Um, so I'm going to hide all the non-video uh, participants and then give you a full screen. Um, so yeah, it's already uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, I think it's good to wait 5 to 10 minutes for people to sure. start. Um, yeah, is there any particular small talk that you'd like to make? How uh, you I would I would love to know if um, where where the people come. So maybe in the chat or on LinkedIn, you can you can look as well. Say where you are from, where you come from, from yes. where you see this video. That would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Hi, Tiziana. It's great to see you again. Tiziana is um, very known in our network. Um, she's also presented. She presented in December, um, and we also made a podcast together. Um, she actually, yeah, she's very active. She writes a lot of articles and creates a lot of content. Speaks uh, quite frequently. Um, Nash Nashmil, welcome. Um, Nashmil, Eric. Uh, yeah, Victoria, all familiar faces. It's great to see you. <laughs> From Düsseldorf. <laughs> yeah, so um, Christelle is asking that we share where we're from. Um, yeah. Details about ourselves. Netherlands, Sweden, Germany. San Diego. Uh -huh. Nice. We are traveling today. Yes. <laughs> um, so, uh, Randstad UX, that's how we got here, the, the network that started the design for tomorrow. Um, yeah, Randstad is a region in the Netherlands um, of several cities. And so when we started, it was initially a network just for this region, um, but we've scaled and we have people from around the world. So that makes it really, really nice. Um, yes. I'm really happy. Yeah, to have such diversity in the in the network. Yeah, and we are going to see that diversity for sustainability, it's so important. So it's just great. Connection, diversity. So important. That actually came up in our panel yesterday as well. So yesterday we had a panel with um, yeah, some key stakeholders, Don Norman, uh, Trina Falpe, uh, Kurt Bakker, Robert Kozma, Sean Carney, and Carla Trainey. And it was a really great panel um, themed design for good. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this, this, this topic came up specifically. So I think it's worth mentioning a thing or two about. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I think there is so many things that we hear eventually, but it's important to 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 tell that in a more conscious conscious way than to really let it sink down and then to understand, okay, I heard that already, I know about that already, but how can I really in, in, take the input, the insight in in and do that even more in my life? So um maybe there is so many things that I'm going to say today that yeah I know already but um my intention there is really like to to be more aware of where we are right now in this sustainable uh journey um because there is so many things to say yeah are you ready to get started I think uh... we we can we can start definitely yeah so, okay well, my screen and uh, give you the floor. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, let's speak about securing our tomorrow. So, uh, and I do believe that securing our tomorrow, it has everything to do with uh, designing a sustainable career. So I, um, 
I am going to be a little bit broad there. It's really about all kinds of career, not only for designers. I know there is so many designers online right now, but I know as well that there is people coming from other kind of horizon. So um, we are going to look at what is a sustainable career. We are going to look at how to create it. We are going to look at if you are already, if you have that, the sustainable career, if you are already in it. We are going to look at um, um, why. Why I do believe that uh, looking at our career sustainable way, it's it's we need we need to do that it's not something that okay it could be nice to to nice to have but it's really something that a lot of us are able to do that and it's for the good of everyone so um before so starting to explain um about a sustainable career maybe i should explain a little bit about myself so i am christelle I am French, I know you can hear that, uh, but maybe you can hear like a, a slight German accent into that because I am I have been living in Germany for the last 20 years now and I came in Germany as a chemical engineer. Um, I was, um, I, I, I work remote, so I work for a French company and I developed the German market um, in, in oh, yeah, the German market for this French company. And then I moved to international sales. I have done that during maybe 15 years. And uh, it was interesting because I could travel, I could understand uh, how to build businesses, how to uh, to make connection between people, culture, um, how to sell my product, and how and I could grow a lot. But at some point, the growth part was not so present anymore. And um, as long as my the part was going, the, the growth part was going down. So the other question came, and it was like, why am I doing that? why I am taking so much energy of myself for that. And the question was, what I'm doing here, what I'm doing here. And um, I some, it was so important, it, it came so strongly in my life that I was even more uh, every, like every year, even more depressed and depressed and depressed. And in 2013, like exactly 10 years ago, I was completely burned and I couldn't, um, no energy at all, couldn't wake up anymore, couldn't stand up anymore, couldn't take care of my job, of my family, of my husband. And um, that was the moment where I thought, okay, I really have to change something and to redesign my life. It was really like, okay, my biggest project now is to design my life and how can I do that? And for me, I thought that it would be like starting with my career, um, but it was far more than that because our career, it's not something really completely um, separate to who we are in our life. And um, at that moment, I started to look at sustainability. 20 years ago, we kind of never heard about sustainability. It's kind of new. Um, and um, what was interesting is that at that moment, I decided to change my life. Like 10 years ago, uh, I, I decided to design it consciously. So my depression went away and for good. I tried that before. I never reached the point where I was depression free. And that moment I decided to have a sustainable career. Whew, depression were gone. And that's why I'm so um I'm I'm so um passionate about that, helping people to go and design their life, design their career in order to get that and to have the biggest impact. And we are going to see that a sustainable career is all about that. So having said that, I would say, um, I would like to continue our journey together. And there is Depending on the age that you have, there is different kind of misconceptions about a sustainable career. So we are going to look at that quickly. And then we are going to look at what are the components of a sustainable career. So 
What I have seen, and from my clients now, so is that there is three, three main misconceptions about creating a sustainable career. My clients usually are engineer, they are lawyer, they are banker, and they are um, HR people. So usually it's the, the, the four main kind of people that come to me and they say, okay, I would like to change my career. I would like to do something with more impact. But I am afraid because of that. A system in career is uh, only for someone who really want to do something with environment. It's like purely environmental and purely in the, like a very ecosystem things. And I am not into that. That's why I cannot go in this direction. So that is the first misconception. The second misconception is, well, right now I have um, a financial success. And if I go in this sustainable um, path, I'm going to have to sacrifice that, which is completely wrong. And I do believe that is the contrary that's happening. If we go in a sustainable career, we can have even more uh, financial success than if we stay in like a more traditional standard. Um, uh, career or, or, or mindset of what should be a career. And the last part is, um, well, there is like a, a lack of opportunities in sustainable careers. And that is a misconception as well. So um, that is what I hear from my clients. So my clients are usually between 35 years old to 55 years old. Um, and you will see why I, I am saying that. So the blueprint of a sustainable career, there is six very, very important things that can tell you if you are in a sustainable career or not. The first one is um, a kind of alignment with your values. If what you do at work is aligned with, with who you are interestingly. And I'll team maybe the so beginning of 2000 or before that. So I, I can remember, so my time, it was like, we don't care really if it's aligned with you. It just, you have to find a job and that's it. So the alignment with the value is something kind, kind of new. The second thing is the continuous learning. You are in a sustainable career when you continuously learn when you are always looking at what's come next. Then there is for sure the environmental uh, impact and as well the social responsibility. And that is something kind of new as well. We didn't really have this, this kind of insights of reflection like 20 years ago. Work-life balance. It's definitely uh, something very important. And again, that is something kind of new. Like I, I don't remember like 30 years ago that it was a thing. So my parents, for example, they never, um, they never thought about work-life balance. The financial stability. Um, that is um, that was something that was present like 20 years ago and it's still very present right now. And the last one is really like the passion and the purpose is having this fire inside because when you have this fire inside and when you are aligned with your value, so it's going to be easier to continue to learn, to grow, to adapt, to have the impact on the environment and and then to go into this financial stability. For the work-life balance, it's, it's a little bit different because when you are so passionate, you have to find some ways to, to have the right balance. Um, it's not, it doesn't come automatically. Okay, so now what I have seen is that the generation perspective of sustainability is different depending, yeah, um, what kind of, um, when you are being born. So the baby boomers, so when they think about sustainability, they are more like tradition. They think about tradition. They think about um, responsibility practice. So they think about what they have done in the past and they would like eventually to go back in what happened in the past because it's something they knew and they think it's the good things to do. That's for the baby boomers generation. 
For the generation X, which would be like more kind of my generation. So they have the technological transition. So they kind of embrace the, the, the technology, but they understand that we can, we can lead that in a sustainable way. Um, and they seek for work-life balance. It's one, one of the most important values. I know that I'm doing some, some um, stereotype or generalization, but it's like the trends, okay? It's just to understand that when we speak about sustainability, we don't necessarily speak about the same things or the same priorities. The millenniums, so they, um, they are more global. So they see the global issues. For sure, they are already like, um, they prioritize the eco-friendly production or products, which is not really the case of the Generation X or baby boomers. And they are advocate for sustainability and ethic. And the last, the last generation, um, so it's, um, they grew with the digital uh, age. So they have really, um, they, they have the, the environmental value, they have the equality value, they have the um, tech driven sustainability, they have kind of everything. So the problem when we speak about sustainability, and I do believe that it's a big problem when we uh, when we work in big organization, is that we don't speak about the same things. And therefore, we do have kind of challenges. We have challenges because um, we, we don't have the, um, the same um, priorities. We don't see the things on the same scale. Uh, some of us see the things on a very short term. Some of us see the things on the very long term. So I'm sure that when you speak about sustainability with your grandfather, it's something completely different than if we speak with someone like 15 years old. Um, and therefore in big uh, companies, it's difficult to discuss about that, about the policy, the decisions, the decision has not made on the same um, kind of priorities. And um, what we should think of is um, to, to bridge the gap. And that's why it's what I said before is that it's so important to have this collective um, connection to really collaborate together, to look at how can we dialogue, how can we exchange, how can we um, understand uh, the other generation, how can we put our resources together, uh, maybe showcase things in order to understand that we are not, we are using the same word, but we are not necessarily thinking about the same things and um, embracing diversity. So this kind of week, like we have today, uh, or we have this week, and last week it started already. It was just great. The 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 the, the, um, the subjects, the point of views, um, the different generation um, explaining. So I have seen the conference last week, and someone say, "Well, we don't speak about design right now because we spoke more about sustainability. Uh, we spoke more about." Um, the connection between people. And so sometimes we use the same words, but we don't have the same definition. And the first thing we should do is really like to start to define what we are thinking about and to define um, what are the words. So to go back to um, the dictionary and to, um, to define all that. Okay, so... A sustainable career for me, <laughs> uh, and here I have just a, a, an example, but uh, it's like a, a piece of puzzle where we have different components into it, like the six components that I, I shared um, before. But it's like a DJ, like I explained here. It's like a DJ, a DJ that is at a party and really try to uh, to do his job as much as 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 well as possible. So it's not going to um, 
to, to, to play the same old tracks again and again and again. So it's go going to really like open itself. It's going to look at uh, what is the energy in the room. It's going to look at what the people needs around. He's not just doing the, the music for himself and, and looking at the um, tracks like he used to, to, to use but he's really like looking and having this interaction with the publicum and having the, the, the groove and the passion and, uh, and in, in, uh, um, going into the growth of what can I do in order for the dance floor to still be full and vibrant and, and open to what's coming. So a sustainable career is people-centered. It's you. It's centered with you. Like again, 20, 30, 50, 100 years ago, the, the career, it was never people centered. It was um, industry centered. And then we move to, okay, let's try to have the people centered. And I really liked what I heard just before. It's like, it's even more now than people centered. It's humanity centered. It's um, going more global and having like one step higher and just, okay, the people are important, but now there are the people and then the people in the environment and what to do with that and how can we have the right music in order for all that to work together. So I have a quiz for you. I hope you are still there because I have like 10 questions and I would like you to take a little bit um, of time in order to answer these questions. Do you have a sustainable career right now? So look at the questions and um, just answer them with A, B or C. So the first question is, how aligned is your current, current career with your values and passion? So it's completely aligned, it's an A, it's somewhat aligned, it's a B, it's not aligned at all, it's a C. And then just go through the questions and let me know in the chat, or yeah, in the chat um, with finished. You can write finished when you are finished and then I know, and then we can go to the next slide. Just let me know when you are finished in the chat. Okay. Okay, great. So now that you have your A, B, C, so just um, for all A that you have, I would suggest to put, um, like a three, three point for your A's, two points for your B's, and one point for your C. And then you will see with the sum, if you have right now a sustainable career, or if you can improve that a bit, or if you really, really have to do something about that. If you want to share your results in the chat, that would be great.
20 points for the first person for Lucia. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Thirty points. <laughs> uh, it's always good to do an assessment, and then it's really how you feel about your results. So for some of us, sometimes you're okay. Um, Twenty-seven points looks great <laughs> for you. Uh, it's all about how you feel right now. So if you feel that it's good, so you are not surprised about your results, and you feel good about it, it's perfect. Um, if you feel that it could be better, so then, um, yeah, maybe you have some homework to do afterwards. Okay. So now we can continue. Uh, and I would like to, um, to, to share why I do believe that it's so important to, to think our career in a sustainable way. And um, just the, the conference before, I really like the idea to have um, a, sustain, a sustainable mindset, because I do believe that it's more than just a career. It's really having the right mindset or having the sustainable mindset. And, um, and there is nine keys that, um, that show us what so um, why we should have a sustainable uh, um, career. The first thing is that a long term fulfillment. So a long term fulfillment when we have a sustainable um, career. So there is this long term fulfillment, which is great because we have a better health. It's uh, it's showed that when we feel good about our task, when we feel good about what we do, so the our health is higher. We have less burnout. I don't say that we don't have it, but it's it's. Um, yeah, we, we see the meaning of that. And when we, the human being can really sacrifice a lot of things as long as he see why he's doing it. If he doesn't see the why, if he doesn't understand it, so it just can get sick. And it was exactly my case. So long-term fulfillment is really um, important and um, that secure your tomorrow, just, just because of your health, that secure your tomorrow. Adaptation, adaptation to change. So we have seen that before. So when you have a sustainable career, so you seek to grow, you seek to adapt, you seek to look at what's going on and to be in interaction with your environment. And that is why that secure your tomorrow, because if you are not ready to adapt to your environment, you are dead. And I, I, mean, I mean it really. Again, I do believe that it was not exactly the same 30, 40 years ago, because the world was a little bit kind of slow, but now it's so quick. Everything happens so quickly. And we have to, to be able to have this change, this adaptability. And then when you are in um, your sustainable career, you are passionate about you do, what you do, and therefore it's easier for you to be able to have this adapt adaptation to change, and that secure your tomorrow. Contributing to a better world. Contributing to a better world, I think you, you can feel that. You are passionate. You put all your um, energy into what you do. So you, you are aligned with what you do when you are aligned. So I, I think like 100% of my clients, when they come to me, they I want to contribute. I want to do something bigger than me. And it's something that comes really like always. So it's something that human being we need to do, we want to do, and doing that we contribute to um, secure our our tomorrow. It's really important, and we feel that. And I don't think that I have to um, to um, to explain more in this uh, in this area. Future proving skills. So if you uh, again stick, stick for uh, seek for a sustainable career, so you look at your future, you look at the impact you can have, you look to serve, to serve the people, to serve the humanity, to serve the earth. So it's like future oriented and not past oriented. That's why you secure your tomorrow doing that. Building resilience. 
Um, that is an interesting point because I don't believe that, I, I believe that it's important. It's something that we do a lot with my client, building resilience. The world is changing all the time. We have to adapt all the time. So resilience is definitely a part of what we should build. Uh, we should build resilience for ourselves. We should build resilience for the company we are working with. We should build resilience for our families. And that is what is going to secure our tomorrow too. So building resilience is important as well. Sorry. Um, ethical leadership. That's interesting as well, because again, 20, 30, 40 years ago, we never spoke about uh, ethical leadership but uh, building your sustainable career, looking at being in unfazed with your values automatically guide you to an ethical leadership. Um, and that can only secure your tomorrow and secure your tomorrow of your teams, secure your tomorrow of your company. Um, and that's why it's important to, um, to build on this sustainable career. Addressing global challenges. Again, it's more than just um, looking at being person-centered, but humanity-centered, and that is going to secure your tomorrow. Again, enhance professional reputation. That is what a sustainable career does, but I would say it's a byproduct of it. I would say that um, when, again, when you are aligned with your value, when you do what, something that you are passionate about, when you, um, when you are energized and engaged about your topic, then yeah, you are going to have a great professional reputation, but you are, it's not going to be just your professional reputation, it's going to be you. You are going to be a better person. Again, so my clients, I can see that. So when they come and when they go out having their sustainability career, so they are different because they unfaze their strength, they unfaze who they are really, their values, and they stand up for who they are. And um, they have more impact. They have more impact in their small environment and bigger environment. And that helps us to leave a legacy, to leave a legacy for the next world, for our children. And that is why building a sustainable career is securing our tomorrow. I think there is no other way to secure our tomorrow in order to respond to the uh, global challenge, to uh, the uh, um, environmental challenge, to people challenge, to, um, to everything what's going to come to us. It's by uh, building a sustainable career. If you have questions in the chat, don't hesitate. The problem with building a sustainability career, so we can think about, wow, that easy. Just I just have to be aligned with my values and everything is fine. So there is the sustainability trade-off. So that means that the sustainability trade-off involves the fact that sometimes we have to um, we have different kind of um, stakeholder, and then we have to combine all that. And the priorities are different, and so we have to do very complicated um, uh, or to take very complicated. Um, um, solutions. Um, some example, uh, it's so much with the energy transition. So sometimes we have to switch to uh, a new energy source, and maybe that might lead to uh, job losses, losses, which is um, not in, well, it, it should be in the balance somehow, but sometimes it's difficult to have that in the balance. The same for biofuels the same for a lot of different things. The complexity is achieving sustainability. It's really like the balance of different things. It's like a puzzle and trying to find the right compromise. And depending on the generation we are in, we don't, we don't have the same uh, priorities. And that's why, again, here we have to communicate. We have to learn that. All the soft skills that we thought is not so important, I do believe that it's something that we're going to help us to, um, to achieve, to, to have a better sustainable uh, world. So to have a holistic approach, to have a long-term perspective and stakeholder engagement. Okay, so now how to create a sustainable career? 
so what I see, um, and, and that's definitely why I decided to do to be a career coach, a shift career coach, is that there is so many people, so they want to have a more sustainable career, but they don't know how to do that. And I have this, this quote that I found very, um, very funny, is like, um, why did the accountant um, become a trapezist? Um, artists without a plan because they wanted to balance their life on the fly and meaning that there is so many people so they know they don't have the system in career they are trained and they they are looking for a quick change which has I, I fully understand that, but the problem is that the quick change doesn't sometimes help to really resolve the problem. I believe that sustainability is not about a quick change, it's really being aware. It's what I said at the beginning, to be aware, to be present, to think carefully. And um, I started to look at um, design thinking uh, a few years ago, because I believe that it's one of the best model for, people to just go and start to, to plan a career. So applying a design thinking model to career planning, there is like six steps. The first step is um, empathizes. So it's really to empathize with you, who you are, um, what are your, um, what do you want to achieve, who, are you, who you are, what are your challenges, so it's really the understanding yourself, and um, it's not always easy to do this first step, because sometimes we are completely cut from ourselves, and we don't even know, we don't know anymore who we are. And um, the, the generation like after 35 years old or something like that, sometimes having children or after having the children, they are really completely lost in, in, their, um, in their personalities. And it's difficult to understand, okay, what is the thing that I want to have in my life? So that's the first part. The second part is defining, really defining. Okay, now I understand who I am. So I should define what I want. And then it's create ideas, um, brainstorming, and so on, like really being creative. And maybe for the designers com um, um, community, it's it's okay, it's not a problem. But for a lot of people, having this step here, the step number three, is very, very, very difficult. When we have the idea and um, we have the brainstorming sessions and so on, so we can go into prototyping our new career or new steps, and then we should test it. And then we should merge it into actions, long-term actions. So I would like us now to play a little bit around. So some of you, your scores have shown that you are not yet in a sustainable career. Some of you, you are fully into it, but um, I would like you to think a little bit about you. To think about you, your values, what is important to you, to think about your strength, to think about what energizes you, what, uh, what you are passionate about, your inspiration. And um, to write down, I am going to let you like two or three minutes and write down, okay, what's, what energized me? What I am passionate about? What really pissed me off? So I really feel engaged that I want to change that because it's not okay that something like that happened. So just think like two or three minutes about who you are and write that down. I'm going to let two minutes. If you have questions, don't hesitate. And what energizes you or what passionates you, it can be in your career, it can be in your private life. 
there is um in that's why it's more like a mindset because there is no um border just go and see broad about your values your passions your strengths If you want to share some of your passion or maybe some project that energizes you, you can share in the chat. We'd love to hear. Maybe we are going to first start some connections today and some new career are going to start, new projects. So one minute left. That kind of comes as well with if you are a people centered, if you are technique centered, if you are introvert, extrovert, all these kind of things are important. It's really knowing you, knowing yourself as much as possible. Okay, so the second step, it's thinking about defining a goal or aspiration for your career. So try to articulate a purpose that you would like to have or a vision that you would like to have and to use for your career what kind of contribution you would like to, to have for the world or to give. And there is uh, like a sentence that I would um, engage, I would suggest you to, to write down. It's, I would like to, and then you write the contribution that you would like to have so that, and then you can write the impact that you have. So for me, is I, um, my contribution is I help um, people, usually it's more women, I help women to shift career, to create a sustainable career, so that they can have a bigger impact in their own world, so that we can do a ripple effect, so that we can all together create a better world. So that would be my contribution and my mission. If you can not really, if you are not sure about what kind of contribution and what kind of impact you want to have right now, really write this sentence and put that on your desk and let it sit for a few, a few days, maybe a few months and come back to this question again and again and again. At some point you are going to find a solution. You are going to find an idea. And if you have already um, an idea of what kind of contribution and impact you want to have on the world, so you can put that in the chat. That can always, like having examples, can always give some insight for new ideas. So that would be the second steps. Redefine what you want. If you don't know what you want, you can. it's difficult to, to get it. If you don't know in which road you want to, to go, what kind of path you want to take, it's difficult to take the right decision or the right direction. 
Then we have the step three. When you have like the kind of contribution and the kind of impact uh, you want to have on this world, on your community, um, then it's the um, ideation. So it's really like brainstorming with friends, with um, yourself, do mind maps and look at the variety of path, role, industry um, that can go in the same purpose. Try to be creative. Try to, yeah, to, to be like completely crazy, like Walt Disney did that, like going completely in, in his dream world in order to create as far as possible. And then it comes back in the reality in order to be more critical and realistic. But the first step is to dream big in order to, to be able to see our visions. So open your mind to everything what is unconventional as well. That would be the step three. And then when you have your step three, so it's time to go and to have some prototypes. So it's to look at the plan of action, what kind of short-term goals, long-term goals with my client who definitely always are doing like a roadmap for the five coming years in order to know what to do, what kind of skills we have to develop, what kind of network we have to develop, and uh, the value creation that we want to, to, to get in order to, um, to give. So uh, speaking with or finding the right people, I always say find your people, find your people, find your mentor, and um, like we do this evening, so attending workshops. Um, I know that, uh, I think today we have more women than men, but uh, I know that for seeking for mentors, um, men are right now even still better than women. So women, we are not very good at finding mentors and connecting on a professional level. So um, that's something that we can um, we can develop in order to create our sustainable career, to go and seek mentors, to go and seek for people that have done it already. And um, that helps to go quicker and to be able to develop and to, to do this um, um, meaningful um, uh, sustainable career. And then we have step four and step, uh, step five and step six, I have put them together, but it's really then test and adapt. When we have our prototype, so then we have to test it. If we don't test it, it's still, it's still a plan and a plan is not a career, it's nothing. So test and adapt. Uh, seeking for feedbacks again, professional. That's why communities are so important. The, um, that's why with community, we can go even um, one step further than what we thought at the beginning. And the last step that I really love, it's like merge purpose with action. So uh, I am all about actions. And I know that um, when we define our career purpose, then we have to go into the action and to, to, um, to continue. It's, it's like a journey. It's like a mindset, as I said, so it's never finished. Like this DJ being at this party, the party is never going to finish. So it's like always merging our purpose with our actions. Okay, so that is how we can design um, um, sustainable career. So I have some example here. Uh, it's names, big names, but this um, Ivan Shwina, um, so he was a rock climber, it was his passion, he was really enthusiastic with that, but what he has seen, the, he defined a problem is that the, the, the gear that people used um, were, were not good enough and therefore um, the results was pollution and environmental harm. So he decided to change that he decided to, um, to, to brainstorm, to have idea uh, in order to make gears with less environmental uh, impact. And that's how he um, started his company. That's only an example. Another example that I like is Mary Barra. 
Uh, I like Marie Barra because uh, she she was CEO of General Motors and uh, well she was one of the first lady in um, in big companies for sure but um, she went into the system sustainability uh, operations as well she won one of the most active in this path but what I like as well is what is not written here it's like beside her career she had a huge impact on the minority, on women, and um, that is another kind of sustainability. It was not in her first role as um, CEO of General Motors, but because of her action there, she had far more impact otherwise. And that is some, something that for me really explain what is a sustainable career because you have the impact even where you don't think that you would have, but it's just because of the way you show up, just because you are so aligned, so passionate, then people follow you. And the impact that you have, you, you just don't realize how big it can be. And um, I have some other examples from my clients, like I have a um, lawyer that decided to change the company in order to work with a more sustainable company. Um, I have um, clothes designers that decided to take recycled um, uh, materials and to, um, to do new uh, clothes with it. Um, I have like a banker that decided to go in a sustainability part of the bank, European Central Bank, in order to be more sustainable there. So there is uh, so many examples. Okay, um, the last thing that I want to unface, but it's not something that I'm going to go deep into because um, I think that for every part, it's it's complicated, it's sustainability and new technology, if it is compatible. So that's exactly the kind of question that my generation or the older generation would ask. And um, I do believe that it's com compatible. There is so many examples explaining that it's compatible, but it's, again, it's really at that moment, I believe that within, within, um, using technology, like just before we spoke about um, uh, chat GPT, and chat GPT, so uh, the, the amount of, um, of energy that this technology used just for the training part, just so huge, that the question, um, how can we use chat GPT in order to, to, to be in this sustainability mindset. Um, I, think, I think that at that moment, it's exactly what I explained before, is that uh, it's, it's complex. We have to discuss with different uh, stakeholders and it's the best way then to really not go on the, um, on the debate, but uh, like um, uh, superficially, but to go deep and to see long term and to try to find the new idea in order to be sure that we can combine everything. Okay, so that's it for me today. Um, I thank you for being here. I would like to unphase again that um, building a um, sustainable career it's something that we can do like every day, just by being more conscious about who we are and what we, what kind of impact we want to have on the world and look at the humanity and being in this kind of observance, then we can secure our tomorrow. I have written a book, an ebook about secure tomorrow. So if you want to receive it, you can put in the chat or I can send it to you, Candice, because I didn't send it to you. Or you can ask me in my in private mes message and I can send it to you. Sounds awesome. Uh, thank <laughs> you for all of your effort today. Thank um, you. I will add all of the, I will add this recording as well as your resources to your event pages and to your presenters page. Um, and there, um, I still have to add the social links. I've been a little bit busy, um, <laughs> but yeah, all your social links will be there as well. So people can recap and revisit. And I know that there was a, a big request for, um, for, for us to have a recording because not, yeah, some people couldn't make it. Yeah. And yeah. So I, I thank you for your time and yeah, for the value. And I think it was really eye-opening. Um, 
and very interesting what you said. Okay, um, thank you very time, much. And do you have time for a quick Q and A from the audience? Yes, if if the audience has any questions, happy to answer words on them. Yes. So you can uh, unmute yourselves and show your video. And if you like, you can ask um, Crystal any of your questions. I think uh, I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> it's late. <laughs> it's late. Well, I think there were already quite a few questions in the chat. Um, and yeah, you were really thorough. You covered everything, I think, from quite a lot of perspectives. I did have a few questions to start with, but yeah, you answered them all. Oh, okay, so. okay, okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, even if question comes afterwards, happy to receive the question because it's always interesting to have new questions that helps as well to research, to go deeper into it. Um, I'm really pleased. I was really pleased to to um, to prepare the, this this conferences today because I I digged a little bit longer, like uh, how like this sustainability um, vocabulary, how we use it, what kind of priority we have, and that it's so different if we speak to a, a 80, per, 80 year old person or a fifteen year old person. Um, I know it's not only for sustainability. Uh, so many times we believe that we understand ourselves because we use the same words and, and because we sometimes we go so global as well. So like I am used to go to Africa where they speak French as well, but it's exact, it's not the same French. So we use the same word, but for different kind of concepts. And um, when we go global, I think it's exactly the problem that we have. Even if we, we try to speak all like one language, like kind of English, um, we have to define even more uh, what, what is the meaning of what we want to say. Exactly. Um, and actually earlier um, today and also yesterday in the, in the events that we've had, um, the the notion of how we interpret words and meaning is yeah so varied across different cultures and yes. actually we have a panel set up for that or we're i'm developing a panel for that um called bridging cultures mm, um, so nice mm. and i think you and i were still uh, talking about uh, another event uh, soon for yeah. female empowerment um, yes. so that's coming up as well and um, yeah, so Christelle, thank you very much. And I, yeah, I thank you for the whole community. Thank you. Thank you for all of you. And I wish you a very nice evening or morning mm -hmm. for wherever you are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye bye.